Hey, as many of you may know, it's now the time for Tu B'Shvat, the New Year of Trees in Israel. And of course, my book um, started with the Almond Tree Miracle in 2007, and I began writing my book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, The Messiah, King of Israel. But it's the New Year of Trees in Israel, and of course, the almond tree is the first to flower in Israel, and it's a signal that winter is over and spring has come. So I hope you'll get a copy of my book from olivepresspublisher.com. It was eight years in the making, and really is a lot of books into one book, so you do get a pretty good deal there. Um, but I just wanted to talk about this article that came out in um, Israel 365 News. And it says, an American rabbi in Jerusalem is using his Torah-based principles to lead the way in global environmentalism. So this is all going to have to do with the way that they're trying to incorporate this global, you know, um, situation with the climate change and all of that. In order to teach these principles to Bible lovers around the world, he has written an eco-Bible that is both a Bible study tool and a guide to healing God's creation. Judaism is based in the land of Israel with much of the temple service focusing on agriculture. This is emphasized on Tu B'Shvat, the 15th day of the month of Shavat, the new year of trees that begins on Sunday evening. That's this evening. The foundation for it is found in a verse in Leviticus, which is Leviticus 19, 23, 25. When you enter the land and plant any tree for food, you shall regard it, its fruit as forbidden. Three years it shall be forbidden for you not to be eaten. In the fourth year, all its fruit may be set aside for jubilation before God, and only in the fifth year may you use its fruit, that its yield to you may be increased. I, the Lord, am your God. For three years after planting a tree, any fruit that it produced was orla, forbidden for consumption. In the fourth year, the fruit was classified as nita revai and could be brought to Jerusalem to be eaten inside the walls of the city. On Tu B'Shvat, every tree acquired an additional year, so even if the tree was planted one week before Tu B'Shvat, when the holiday arrived, the tree was now one year old. After passing through three such Tu B'Shvats, the tree was no longer Orla, or forbidden. With all of this focus on nature, agriculture, and the land, a commentary on the Bible that focused on environmentalism was necessary, according to Rabbi Yotanan Neril. Therefore, Rabbi Neril wrote the Eco Bible, an ecological commentary on the Hebrew Bible. He said, I took courses on environmental issues in college and then came to Israel and studied for over six years in yeshivot, Jewish learning centers. Rabbi Neville, Ner <laughs> Rabbi Nerol told Israel 365 News, when I was studying Jewish texts, I saw deep linkages between the Bible and ecology. I worked with editors and my co-author, Rabbi Leo D., and out came Eco Bible. Rabbi Nerol's inspiration was also more personal. The Talmud, he says that whoever walks four cubits in the land of Israel is assured of a place in the world to come. And Rabbi Narrell embodies that precept. Raised in California, he gathers inspiration from hiking to the forests surrounding Jerusalem with his wife, Shana, and their two children. In addition to being the basis of his Jewish faith, Rabbi Narrell sees the Torah as the perfect vehicle to teach about environmentalism to people of all religions. 
So here comes the One World Religion Incorporated. The Eco Bible is for anyone who seeks to find wisdom in the Bible, he said, at a time of ecological and spiritual crisis. How the Bible is understood can have a profound impact on human behavior since billions of people to religions worldwide consider it a holy book. The book is a commentary on over one, 400 verses, sorry, from an environmental perspective. Volume 1 is a commentary on Genesis and Exodus. Volume 2 is a commentary on Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Eco Bible quotes over 100 rabbis and other great Jewish thinkers commenting on verses from the Hebrew Bible. Rabbi Narrell said, until now, their ecological insights could be found scattered in hundreds of books, but might only be noticed by a Bible scholar also focused on ecology. Eco Bible gathers and connects these insights for anyone studying the Hebrew Bible, insights which relate more critically to our time than any other. We hope that this Eco Bible will speak to all those who relate deeply to the Hebrew Bible and deeply care about the health and survival of our planet, the rabbi said. One commentary teaches a lesson about edible trees based on Genesis 1, 11 through 12, and God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, seed-bearing plants, fruit trees of every kind on the earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so, the earth brought forth vegetation, seed-bearing plants of every kind, and trees of every kind, bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And Rabbi Narrell cites Rabbi Jacob ben Asher, a medieval rabbi authority known as the Laal HaTarim. Rabbi Asher points out God commanded the earth to produce fruit trees that bear fruit. Rabbi Narrell wrote in the Eco Bible, meaning trees whose bark could be eaten as well as their fruit. However, he notes that the earth produced trees whose bark is not eaten that produce fruit in order that the trees themselves would not be devoured. Long ago and today, we have come to the understanding that trees, in addition to the fruit they produce, have broader value, including providing homes for animals, large and small, retaining soil to prevent erosion and catastrophic mudslides. Another eco-commentary explains a verse about Abraham. Let a little water be brought Bathe your feet and recline under the tree, Genesis 18, 4. Rabbi Narrell cites Rabbanu Hananuel ben Kushel in 11th century. Um, he asked why the angels revealed themselves to Abraham under a tree. He answered that in doing so, they revealed a message to Abraham. You, like a tree, will flourish even in old age. And his commentary is derived from a verse in Job. There is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will renew itself. Its shoots will not cease. If its roots are old in the earth and its stump dies in the ground, at the scent of water it will bud and produce branches like a sapling. In Job 14, 7 through 9, Abraham's resilience and prosperity are compared to a tree. Indeed, trees are one of the most resilient organisms, specifically against drought. This is increasingly important in light of climate change, causing unpredictable rainfall, extreme weather events, and stronger pests that threaten forests, he said. Contemporary researchers have discovered that diverse forests with trees that employ a high diversity of traits related to water use suffer less of an impact from drought. They are also now more resilient to forest fires. Yet another commentary is based upon a pact made by Abraham. He planted a tamarisk at Beersheba and invoked there the name of God the everlasting God in Genesis 21:33, Rabbi Narrell cited the 19th century commentary by Rabbi Meir Labush ben Yael Makiel Weiser, known as the Malbun, 
who explained that the tamarisk was actually an orchard. The peace pact made with Bimelech, king of Gerar, today's Gaza, is concluded with the planting of fruit trees, Rabbi Narrell said. This represents the importance of staining long-term and environmental prosperity for all and demonstrating that true peace is based upon a joint hope for a better future. This is comparable to modern Israel and Jordan, which is based on the 1994 Peace Pact on Sharing Water Resources, he concluded. Rabbi Narrell is an active force in the world of environmentalism. He founded the Interfaith Center for Sustainable Development, which reveals the connection between religion and ecology and mobilizes faith communities to act on climate change. He is a member of the United Nations Environmental Program Faith-Based Advisory Council and has spoken internationally on religion and the environment. The rabbi also co-organized 12 interfaith environmental conferences in the U.S. and Israel. Most recently, he helped organize an initiative called the Sinai Climate Partnership, which took place in the Sinai Peninsula in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt, in November. Now listen, the event culminated in the 10 Principles for Climate Justice. As a symbolic gesture, some participants staged, staged the smashing of a pair of tablets on the peak of Mount Sinai. So incredible, incredible mockery of the Ten Commandments. So that's a really interesting article. Um, and right now is the time of the budding of the almond tree. And you know my miraculous story about that God gave me an almond tree that I actually planted on Tubushvat. And in the testimony that I talk about in my book, it sprouted three days and three nights after Passover. Ironically, symbolic of the resurrection of the Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So, Tubashvat has always been extremely special to me because of my entire book, 858 pages of a masterpiece of God's testimony in the almond tree, and not only in that tree, but in many of the trees in Israel that the Lord revealed so much special details about. And I hope you'll read that book, and I hope you'll, you'll know that my miracle took place when I was given a divine revelation about the almond tree, and it was at the time of Tubashvat, which I didn't even know about that holiday, and we don't have almond trees here in Colorado. So it was incredible that it was like uh, I woke up and electricity was about me, and these things were being revealed to me, and I sat up real quick and wrote it down. The Lord told me to send it to Jerusalem immediately, and I had no idea that this lady that was going to receive my note, that she was going to get my letter about the revelation of the almond tree. And that morning she was at the same time and same hour I was given the revelation. Nine hours later there, at the same time though, she was walking past an almond tree and she tried to pass the almond tree that was just starting to flower three times and someone very powerful, she said, pulled her by the arm and said, take a picture of the beautiful tree. Well, when she got back to the office, she opened up my revelation and read it. And having no knowledge about the almond tree at that time, it was a miracle and she said, I knew God had me take this picture, and it was meant for you. And that picture is the, on the cover of my book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, the Messiah, King of Israel. And it is the almond tree that budded on Holy Mount Moriah. And so it's a very special, beautiful story. And it ends on Mount Sinai in Arabia, and my meeting of 
Jim and Penny Caldwell via online. And we've talked so many times via email. <laughs> and many things have happened to me since that time with uh, the death of my mom and our home being sold and having nowhere to go and having to figure that out and trying to keep this testimony going. It's the time of Tu B'Shvat and the almond tree is so beautiful. And after my tree sprouted, it was growing and I would lift it up. I would go outside and lift it up and every single time it would bring rain. It was so strange. And when we had that big Colorado flood in 2013, I had just taken it out and lifted it up and all this rain came and the clouds stayed stationed over Colorado for seven days. And it rained and rained and rained. And it was one of the most devastating floods ever in the state of Colorado. Um, based on the entire testimony, I can say I really do believe that there was something to that. And the fact that the almond tree is there's so much I could say about it. I showed you about the almond tree firewood that came by a miracle last year, I believe it was. I made a video about it. And that wood was from California. I told you about the almond tree drum kit that was so rare. And they had harvested trees that were 28 years old the entire length of time that my mom and I lived in our home before it was sold. Now, it was our home for 48 years, but I helped my mom out. She became handicapped and um, other issues, which I don't go into now, but it's just incredible. And there's so much more I can say about the almond tree. And it's been my testimony in my 858 page book, which you can get at olivepresspublisher.com. If you want to support me and my channel, it's paypal.me slash kkrococo at yahoo.com. And Kimberly Ballard, P.O. Box 246, Niwot, N-I-W-O-T, Colorado, 80544. And I really would like to tell you more about this incredible story and I've tried to share so much with you about it in my past videos, but my almond tree eventually did bloom and that's the banner that's on my channel with the blue sky behind it. Those were my blossoms from my tree that I photographed. And right now the almond blossoms are starting to flower and Shavat is the month that we are in and it's a time that the rabbis have said that there's like um, a special presence of God in this season that we're to be highly aware of the Lord's presence. So God bless you for the new year of trees. God bless the almond tree and my own personal almond tree that I actually have here, but it retains much, uh, damage from the move so let's put it that way uh, I'm praying for it but it's an almond rod of God and it's very special and the whole time I was writing the tree was growing and I was able to take pictures of its leaves and its branches and just very special things about it and the flowers and it eventually started to form little tiny fruit nuts so um the tree is about seven years old so this is what i just wanted to say and i hope you're blessed by hearing about this i don't think they have to turn everything into a climate change crisis you know just let the trees bloom and let them be a testimony of god and I'm so blessed to have had the experience that I did and the miracles that took place because of the almond tree and because of Tu B'Shvat and my first miracle happening at the time of Tu B'Shvat. And 
I told you that both my parents passed away in the month of Shabbat. And I had the viewing of my mom on the eve of Tu B'Shvat. And when I came back on Tu B'Shvat, the first blossom opened on my almond tree. And my mother had seen the buds in the photographs I took in to show her in her hospital bed. And I dried some of those blossoms and put them with her. She knew all about the story and she went to heaven to talk to Jesus about the revelations that he had given me and how it revealed him to her and how miraculous the story was. I just um, wanna wish you a happy new year of trees and God bless everybody. And may all the beautiful t fruit trees be planted in Israel and elsewhere and may the almond trees shine forth their glorious blossoms and continue to build this testimony of the Lord. Good night.